Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, weather in five, five days and five minutes on this Memorial Day. And please take the time out to remember those who have given their lives for our nation. Uh, in the uh, meantime, I don't know what this is, folks, uh, but I'm not looking at the satellite loop. And there's this, <clears throat> I guess there's a, some sort of little upper trough that is moving southeastward and picked up a little bit of moisture from the Great Lakes. And it's obviously producing some clouds. And uh, even on the radar, uh, believe it or not, at midday, uh, we're seeing a couple of uh, echoes there. It's really light stuff. I don't even know if any of this is actually reaching the ground. It's possible that there might be a few raindrops in there, but that should be it, uh, assuming it survives its trip to the southeast. But as we look up and down the east coast, <coughs> excuse me, it's very quiet from Maine all the way down to Florida. Uh, some showers and thunderstorms off the Florida east coast. And also, we've got a lot of action up in the Northern Plains today. That's where our severe weather uh, is going to be focused. And uh, you can take a look here on the uh, U.S. satellite loop. Already seeing a few lightning strikes going on as uh, moisture is streaming northward. And you're getting uh, very warm, humid air moving up into the Northern Plains. And on the backside, there's colder, drier air behind it. So you've got some good forcing here uh, to produce some showers and thunderstorms. The Storm Prediction Center has a moderate risk of severe weather from northeastern South Dakota into Minnesota and a large area of enhanced risk, enhanced risk. And notice, by the way, the shape of the risk areas is like a comma. So whenever you see that, you're dealing with um, a fairly strong upper air cutoff low or a strong negatively tilted trough that's creating rotation. Uh, and that is going to uh, play itself out i'm sure there will be some tornadoes here out of this when you've got a 15 percent risk being indicated in a very large area of 10 percent risk also uh, being aided uh, given uh, being indicated for uh, the uh, moderate the moderate and some of the enhanced area of risk and wind there is a 45 percent probability of wind uh, in excess of uh, 50 knots and in fact in the hatched area uh, is a fairly uh, good chance that there could even be winds exceeding 65 knots. And you'll notice a 30% chance of hail uh, being indicated. Now, for tomorrow, the risk area goes from the Great Lakes down into North Texas, uh, slight to enhanced. Uh, a little bit of thunderstorm risk in the northeast because we do have a backdoor cold front that's going to be working its way southwestward uh, from uh, New England. And then on Wednesday, we have a slight risk for much of upstate New York, mainly north and west of the Hudson, going across western and southern New York, and also uh, into uh, no northwestern Pennsylvania, kind of uh, takes it on a diagonal into northeast PA, into eastern Ohio. The marginal risk reaches about New York City, western Massachusetts, western Connecticut, northwest Jersey, down into southeast PA, and along the Pennsylvania-Maryland line. Days four through eight, there's another risk zone for day four. So this is for... Day four is Thursday into Friday, and that is going to be from southern New Jersey and extreme southeastern Pennsylvania southward to the Virginia, North Carolina state line. So obviously there'll be a marginal risk that will be on the other side of that. Rainfall the next seven days, really not much. Uh, even with these thunderstorms, we're looking at generally less than a quarter of an inch and in some cases less than a tenth of an inch from southern New England down into Virginia. Big rains in Florida, especially south Florida, three to five inches of rain in the next seven days. And also in the parts of the southern and central plains into the middle Mississippi Valley, where it could be anywhere from an inch to as much as two to three inches. Busy in the northern plains, arcing back to the northern Rockies and to parts of the Pacific Northwest. So. Uh, as far as what we're expecting here, so obviously the rest of the day, uh, except for that little up, little thing that's moving down from upstate New York, heading southeast, which should be fine, and most of you are going to miss that, but the ones that you get into that, you get a shower, it, it, it really won't last too long. Uh, we're seeing temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s for highs. Uh, we have tomorrow where the wind is going to be from the northwest, and that is going to take temperatures up to the low and mid-90s. Now, this is what it looks like for tomorrow morning. Uh, to, we have a, a backdoor cold front. It's right about here, and it's going to take all day for it to move southwestward. But while it's to the north, 
Uh, the areas to the north are going to be in 60s and 70s. The 80s to the south of it are going to be in the upper 80s to mid 90s. That, I think, is a given for tomorrow. That backdoor front is going to make it to about New York City sometime Tuesday evening. And then just kind of lay there on Wednesday. So it sort of makes Wednesday a tricky day for temperature forecasts uh, as far as the highs are concerned. So, for example, as we uh, check out uh, Wednesday... Uh, if you are, the backdoor front is going to create southeast winds or south-southeast winds. That's not going to impact temperatures too much inland where the winds are going to be more southwest or even west. So say from Washington, D.C. into southeastern Pennsylvania, you're looking at low to mid-90s. You start to go north from there, it's mid to upper 80s. You head toward the New Jersey-Pennsylvania state line and you start going east toward New York City, it's mostly low 80s. Along the shore, it's in the 70s. Along the immediate coast, it's in the 60s. And in southern, southeastern New England tomorrow, temperatures are not even going to get out of the um, mid and upper 60s. So that is cool air, but the stalled backdoor front could probably trigger off some showers and thunderstorms. And then another front coming down from the north, triggering some showers and thunderstorms. And you can see the bulk of the hev of, of these heavier weather is in upstate New York and into New England, and that's where SPC's got its risk, and that makes sense. The front's going to get hung up somewhat on Thursday, so that's going to make it also a little bit tricky because there'll probably be some clouds around, and uh, there also will uh, be perhaps uh, some shower risk on Thursday. The severe weather risk on Thursday, as we showed you earlier, shifts south to southern New Jersey and points southward, but there still might be a shower or a thunderstorm around on Thursday. And then as we move along, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, look pretty good here for the most part. Uh, nothing crazy hot, just uh, a warm early June weekend. And then that'll be followed by a cold front probably in the early part of next week. Also, by the way, I'm expecting the tropics to start uh, picking up a little bit uh, in, in this coming week. Uh, the models are both focusing on something. There's a large gyre of uh, moisture uh, and clouds. And in fact, uh, Agatha on the Pacific side is coming into Mexico. So that's going to become part of this big moisture gyre that's going to be down uh, over Central America. And something's likely to spin out of that in the Caribbean or maybe in the Southwest Gulf. We're going to have to see. Models aren't exactly sure exactly where but we do see this uh, all playing out on the map uh, going forward so uh, we're going to be back to normal tomorrow with the joe and joe weather show and everything else so enjoy the rest of your day and i'm going to take a break tonight because uh, i'm still dealing with this leg issue i posted it up on facebook um, i got my legs taken out from under me by a bunch of dogs at the dog park and it's uh, badly dislocated so i'm having trouble getting around these days let's put it that way um, it's been a quite an interesting six months for me. Have a great uh, rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow.